Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. During this program, I'm going to show you the steps in the construction of a spiral matrix band. Additionally, I'll show the adaptation of the matrix band on a prepared tooth. And then I'll review the steps of the construction and adaptation of the top of my matrix band. The advantage of the spiral matrix band is, it is, a, is that it is a custom-made matrix band which can be used on a prepared tooth where there is a rubber dam clamp in place. A prepared tooth as number T with a rubber dam clamp in place would not be a good candidate for use of a Toffelmeyer proof for a matrix band because the retainer handle would act as an impediment on the rubber dam clamp and would not be able to seat the band. And so in pedodontics we use a spot welded matrix band. This custom made band is made with stainless steel bulk matrix material. The kind that you will have available in the clinic is this type of band material which is 7 sixteenths by 2 thousandths inch thick. The first thing that you'll do in the construction of this band is to cut a length of the matrix band material. The most common mistake is not cutting enough of the material. The 7 sixteenths inch width is really too wide and since we want the height of the final band to be only a millimeter or two above the intended marginal ridge, we will cut this band material almost in half. While it is not available in our clinic, you can purchase for future use either 5 sixteenths inch width or 3 sixteenths inch width matrix band material. After we've decided on the length of band material we care to use, the next step is to tack weld this piece of band material. In our clinic, we have available two spot welders. This is one of them. It's a Rocky Mountain spot welder. And these are the features of the welder. There are basically two settings. The first setting adjusts the intensity of the weld. Every machine is different, and this machine happens to use the number two setting. The goal in, the, in making the weld is to have the weld strong enough to hold the band material together, and yet be not so tight that when we go to remove the band, we cannot break the weld apart. So on this band, on this weld, we are using the number two setting. The other feature is the welding stage. There are several choices in welding stages, and we'll be using the small stage. And this is the way it is typically set up. The last feature of this is the welding unit itself, which is a micro switch, which when depressed, a small light will flash in this area. Regardless of how long you hold the switch down, the weld is the same duration. The only thing that changes is the intensity of the weld, which we have controlled with the other switch. And so it does not make any sense to hold the switch down. When a weld is made, it is typically good to push the switch more than once, since we will get a stronger weld. We're going to tack weld this material by just simply approximating the two ends, putting it on the welding stage, and then welding it. The idea at this point is to have the two ends together so that it is more easy to adapt the band on the prepared tooth. Now we'll go back to the prepared tooth and adapt the band. <coughs> to adapt the band, the tech welded band is seated over the tooth and seated completely cervically. The gingival tissues in the 
human mouth are not quite as resilient as the rubber gingiva is typodon. And so you'll notice throughout that I'll be pushing a lot harder on the band to suit it cervically. This is just a feature of the typodon and not a feature that we would expect to find when we're working in the uh, child's mouth. Once the band is suited, we will use a pair of haul pliers. The haul pliers have rounded edges and serrated beaks in order to grip the band to snug it up tightly against the tooth. <coughs> By using light finger pressure and seating the band cervically, we can use the hot pliers. Open the hot pliers just wide enough to reach from the mesial to the distal of the tooth. And then while maintaining the band cervically, pull the band and two right together. The purpose of doing this is to adapt the band tightly on the tooth so that the matrix is adapted well but not so tightly that the band cannot be removed easily. Once this is done, maintain the pliers in place and gently lift the band off the tooth. Now the band is ready to be welded. We'll carry the band back to the spot welder, maintaining the band in the hot pliers just as we've taken it off the tooth. We're going to make the weld right at the crimp, at the corner, where we have crimped the band. And we're weld in two places. One's at the occlusal and one's at the cervical. After the band has been welded, there is an excess of band material that sticks out of the buccal surface. This excess matrix material would act much the same as a retainer handle. And so we want to remove this excess and we'll do so simply by cutting it off. The cervical portion of the, of the cut is angled occlusally slightly so that when the band is finished, this portion of the cervical band will not impinge unnecessarily in the soft tissue. At this stage, the band can be adapted on the tooth, or the remaining excess can be folded over with the hot plier. So that there is no matrix material protruding buckle from the band. Now the band is ready to be applied on the tooth. At this stage, the band simply needs to be seated on the tooth. It should not be too loose or too tight. If the band is too loose from the time when you crimp the band initially, the welder is not made tight enough. If the band is too tight when you seat it, the weld has been made too tightly and the band should be remade as the band which is too tight will cause the proximal surface to be under contoured. At this stage, you're ready to wedge the band into place. We use a wizard wedge. This hardwood wedge has a sharp tip and we'll simply break off that sharp tip with the hot plier. To seat the wedge, either the thumb pliers may be used to drive the wedge. The problem with this pair of pliers is that the plier tends to slide down the wedge because of the taper of the wedge. An alternative means of placing the wedge is with the hot plier. The hot plier with its serrated beak will hold the wedge securely 
so that it can be driven to place without sliding down the tapered surface of the wedge. Now at this stage, the matrix band is completed. Let's review the criteria that we will use to determine if the band is satisfactory to continue the placement of the amalgam. The band should be tightly adapted, not only around the tooth, but at the cervical. And the final adaptation should be with the wedge, wedging the cervical of the band against the prepared proximal box. The band should not be over-contoured so that the proximal ends up being over-contoured. And similarly, it should not be under-contoured so that the proximal surface is under-contoured. The band should extend about a millimeter or two above the height of the intended marginal ridge to give us packing convenience and also so that we can remove the band with the greatest amount of ease. The Toffelmeyer matrix band uses a Toffelmeyer retainer and Toffelmeyer preformed matrix bands. In the picture, you see the two retainers that you have available in the clinic. They are both contra-angle matrix retainers. This is the adult size Toffelmeyer retainer, and below it you see the child size Toffelmeyer matrix retainer. The features of both bands are the s of both retainers are the same. And the features are a forward portion of the retainer from which the band exits. The slot in this portion of the retainer is the part of the retainer which holds the matrix band in place in the retainer. The large adjustment screw on the back portion of the band tightens the band on the tooth after the band is in place. And the most back part of the band is a screw which tightens the retainer tightens the band in the retainer. The Toffelmeyer matrix retainer uses preformed Toffelmeyer matrix bands. The ones that we have available in the clinic are the number 1, 13, and 14 bands. The number 1 band is the universal permanent tooth band. The number 13 band is the universal primary tooth band. It is different in that it is narrower than the number one, and at either end of the band, there are wider portions for our retaining the band securely in the retainer. The other band we use is the number 14 band. This band is designed like the number 13 band, except there are elongated portions in the middle portion of the band for our MO and DO preparations. I'm going to use a number 13 Toffelmeyer matrix band for this demonstration. You'll notice that the Toffelmeyer matrix bands are curved. This is so that when the ends of the band are approximated, the contour of the band simulates the tapered form of the primary tooth. In this situation, the way I've approximated the band, the cervical of the band will be at the bottom of the picture, and the occlusal of the band will be at the top of the picture. Now I'm going to place this band in the child size Toffelmeyer retainer. I have turned the band so that the, the large portion of the ends of the band are at the occlusal and the straight portion at the cervical. that the band be securely seated in the retainer. So once you begin turning the adjustment screw, the band can be actually pulled out of the retainer as the band is drawn up on the tooth. This band is in place. There are three various exit paths which the band can take 
from the retainer. I was showing the band exiting straight from the retainer. The band could also exit from either one of the two other sides. Now with the band in the retainer, we're ready to adapt the band on the prepared tooth. In this situation, if the prepared tooth were the clamped tooth, we would, be, we would not be able to use the top of my retainer and band. We would have to use a spot welded matrix band. This dual preparation on a first primary molar, I will seat the band over the prepared tooth and pull the band up on the lingual surface and adapt it lightly. And then maintain this position and maintain the cervical position of the band. Turn the adjustment screw to tighten the band tightly on the prepared tooth. The band is adapted tightly with the cervical and we're ready to place the wedge. As before, we will use a wizard wedge with the tip broken off and we will use the hot pliers to place the wedge as we did in the previous example. After the albums have been packed, we want to remove the matrix bands. The albums have been packed now and we're ready to remove the matrix bands. Our goal in removing the matrix bands, of course, is to maintain the amalgam intact without fracturing the marginal ridge. In order to do this, there are two tasks we have to do. One is to remove the retainer handle from the top of my band. And we simply loosen the adjustment screw and then the retaining screw for the band, stabilize the band, and remove the retainer. The next task we're going to do is to break open the spot welded matrix band. This is best done with the round end of the 7C carver. Insert the carver in the buckle of the band near the wedge, near the weld, and stabilizing the band, twist the 7C and break the welded joint. not uncommon clinically to find that the welded portion is too tight and we may preferentially cut the band. A pair of sharp pointed scissors or cursors will do this. This may be a preferable manner in some cases rather than trying to break the weld. So if the 7C does not break the weld right away, use a pair of scissors and cut the band at least part way and then split up the remaining way with the 7C carver. Both parts of the band are apart now and we're ready to move the matrix band. Notice that I've left the wedge in place during this whole procedure. The wedge will add a great deal of stability to the bands so that when you're cutting or breaking apart the weld, the band will not rock against the freshly packed amalgam and cause marginal ridge fracture. We'll remove the wedge with the same instrument that we put with the replace the wedge with, the hot plier. And then using a moistened cotton pellet in the, in the front forceps, stabilizing the marginal wedge, and we'll remove the matrix bands. The most major one is removed first, in this case a Toffelmeyer band. the band will be removed and we are ready to proceed with the final part of our cutting procedure. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.